Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Tuesday. We got through some uh, pretty wicked severe weather here over parts of uh, New Jersey, southeastern New York, and Long Island. Uh, noticed a few trees down. We had a lot of heavy rain. Uh, but that's all done with now. And uh, what I'm going to do, by the way, is uh, I'm going to cut a separate video to deal with the trop the two tropical systems, Brett and what may soon be Tropical Storm Cindy. That'll follow this video a little bit later on as soon as I get all the uh, updated information from the National Hurricane Center to see what they're doing. But regardless of that, uh, the moisture with this is tied uh, to our weather forecast going forward. And I, I want to show you why, uh, specifically talking about you know my area here, eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York City, Long Island, Connecticut, and southeastern New York State in the Hudson Valley. Uh, I'm showing you here, this is the uh, upper air jet stream pattern uh, for this morning. And you know what we have, you have this very strong jet that comes out of the Pacific. We have a trough that runs from... Uh, James Bay down to the Tennessee Valley. We've got a high, a big ridge out in the west. We've got a ridge out in the Atlantic. And you have this weakness that's right in the middle. So this is where our tropical system uh, that we're concerned about uh, is uh, currently sitting. And it's responding to the weakness that exists between the two ridges on either side and the trough in the middle. Now, what all the models pretty much do this now at this point as we roll along and we move to Wednesday, and by the way, for those of you who are new, these are maps from tropicaltidbits.com. If you look up here, you can see the date I'm talking about, and this is in Greenwich time. So uh, midnight Greenwich time is, the, uh, is equivalent to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So this will switch off to Thursday at 8 o'clock at night in the east, okay, even though it's technically still Wednesday for us, all right? So there you have it. This is at 8 p.m. Wednesday. Now, this is the representation of the tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico. And what happens is, if you'll notice, we've got this uh, trough pulls out, but there's another one, another upper air system that's swinging down behind it in that Pacific jet. And that's going to create... Uh, an alleyway for the moisture from this to get drawn northeastward. I think the, the big question is going to be how far north does that moisture get and it would impact the weekend uh, here in my area. And you can see how that trough swings around. If you look closely, there's the representation of what's left of the tropical system in southwestern Arkansas right here. This is on Friday morning. So here we have the remnants of the tropical system and here's that trough that's swinging around. OK, so it's going to pick that up and move the moisture to the northeast. And again, the question is going to be how far north does it get? Now, you'll notice as we go into Saturday and into Saturday night, this trough is very broad in nature. So that would suggest that the moisture will probably turn more eastward with time. So there will be a question as to how far north uh, the rains from this ultimately get. Uh, they may only make it as far north as North Carolina or Virginia and not much further north than that. So that uh, the only issue up in my neck of the woods will be uh, clouds. Uh, but we'll have to see if this trough is a little sharper. Uh, if we have a trough that looks more like like this, a little bit more of a V shape to it, then, you know, you might wind up drawing that moisture a little bit further to the north. So that's something we're going to watch for to uh, see if models begin to trend in that direction. You'll notice the ridge in the west shifts a little bit further westward. So the ridge is just inland of the coast and the ridge in the Atlantic kind of flattens out a little bit uh, as opposed to what it was uh, when we started this sequence. And then it swings around and you can see that trough in the east overwhelms for the last week of June. Uh, so that will, in my view, uh, certainly uh, we can state that outside of the odd, very warm day in between cold fronts, uh, it will not be able to get hot uh, for uh, too long, uh, just uh, maybe for a day at most. And then another front will move on through. And then as we move into the beginning of July, trough kind of pulls out a little bit, but, you know, we're still on the edge of all of this. So it's this ridge is 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 here and the Atlantic Ridge is way out. Um we're going to be kind of on the edge of very warm to borderline hot weather here 
uh, maybe for that first week in July. It doesn't look like anything excessive uh, that, that we'd have to worry about, but this is just something uh, that we'll just keep our eyes on in the longer term because we do have you know this short-term problem. Now, I'll show you. We're going to come back to this in a second, but I just want to show you here. You know, here's that front from yesterday that's moved on through, and here is the tropical system, and you can see that moisture is just kind of entrained in, in that whole um, scheme that runs from the frontal zone right down to where uh, the uh, system is in the Gulf of Mexico. And if you look closely as this swings over to uh, day, daytime and you can see the actual uh, clouds, right in here is probably where the circulation center is. And we seem to be getting you know, a burst of convection uh, on the east and north side of it that's trying to come around. So this could be an in indicator that uh, the system may wind up becoming a tropical storm. Even if it does, I think the big uh, sort of story with all of this, for those of you who are watching along the Gulf Coast, the western side of this system right now doesn't have very much. It's going to be mainly to the north and to the east of the center that you're going to get into rain and some wind, uh, maybe some gales, but I don't think it'll be anything uh, that uh, you won't be able to handle. And if we look at the current radar, you can see how that uh, the radar echoes reflect all of this uh, with rains coming into southeastern Louisiana and along the uh, Mississippi, uh, Alabama coast and the Florida panhandle. Some heavy rains coming in, continue to come in from off the Gulf of Mexico, but there really isn't very much going on on the western side. So if you wind up with the center coming in, say, in western Louisiana, if you're in east Texas, you may not very, really experience too much out of this. Uh, certainly you wouldn't experience anything you can't deal with and that the main focus of attention is going to be to the, nor uh, to the northeast, really pretty much to the northeast and east of the center, given the way this system has that sort of very broad look. So let's come back to the weather models here, and we'll, uh, I'll get a little bit closer. You know, we probably could use look at the eastern view and, and look at this. So um, I'll put the precip on so we can take a look. And we'll roll it back. All right, so there's your tropical system on the GFS. Here's the front kind of sagging to the south. We have a little weak system that's coming through here on Wednesday that might produce a scattered shower or thunderstorm. But other than that, uh, no issues. There's your uh, tropical system. Uh, the GFS representation of this is a little tighter as it gets closer to the coast. So that might indicate that it uh, could strengthen a bit. And it moves inland over southwestern Louisiana. At this point, it does produce some rain on the western side. Uh, with uh, it system seems to look a little more symmetrical here uh, as it gets closer to the coastline, but it, it's not showing it strengthening all that much. I mean, the pressure does drop a bit, but it, it, it doesn't go crazy. Now, watch as this moisture. Now we're going into Friday. Uh, there's the remnant low in southwestern Arkansas, kind of gets picked up, and then you've got this other front that's uh, coming through. On Saturday, here's Saturday morning. So you have a cold front here, and you have the remnant precip with the tropical system. Now the GFS would have it, uh, if the GFS is correct, it would have it where we do get into some of this rain here on Saturday before everything moves offshore and weather conditions improve on Sunday. The European has a bit of a different view of this, in that uh, it suppresses uh, this and takes it. Uh, further to the south. It, it has uh, a broader looking upper air jet stream than the GFS does. I'll switch to the jet stream here uh, at, at uh, this point for Saturday. And you can see that the GFS's upper air is pretty flat west to east with the disturbances moving along it. Um, the European will go to the uh, same time frame. You know, it kind of you know, it has a bit more of a disjointed look to it. It's even flatter than the GFS is. You've got, you know, little ripples running around. There's no real organized trough here on the European so that when we uh, swing it around to uh, Sunday, you know, you've got this next trough already swinging down. You can see it there. This is by uh, Monday, Sunday night. That next trough is swinging down. So the remnants at this point have already passed to the south and east. So this would bring maybe some heavy rains to parts of Virginia and North Carolina. I'll uh, switch to the G back to the GFS to show you, you know, it, it, they're fairly similar here at this point. Uh, when we go back to, let me just run it back to 
to Saturday evening. There's the GFS kind of has this, you know, broad west to east flow. Um, the European, you know, it's a little more broken on the European in the sense that, you know, you can pick out these definable shortwave troughs in there where the GFS has this more this smoother look to it. So, you know, the GFS might be guilty of just kind of smoothing everything out and trying to bring it up ahead of the front. And the European is keeping things a little more separate and uh, suppressing what's left of the remnant moisture and taking it out uh, to the south. Not to ignore my friends in the west. And we'll, uh, I'll put the whole U.S. view up so we can take a look from coast to coast, being that in the west, you know, weather is kind of going into more of a summertime mode here. So I'll just back it up a bit. And, you know, here's, here's our tropical system. You can see in the west things are just pretty, um, you know, typical summertime. You've got easterly winds blowing across from the Rockies up into the Pacific Northwest. And it's, it's mostly dry, uh, a little, little bit of wet weather back through Texas and in parts of the western Gulf over time. Uh, moving through next week, uh, weather fronts continue to come through every couple of days in the east. Uh, in the west, it looks like it's in, uh, you know, again, pretty much summertime mode here. There's a pretty vigorous system that the GFS is showing moving through the Great Lakes late next week and heading into the east uh, just in time for the first weekend of July. Not seeing any additional tropical systems. But again, uh, the point for the uh, with, with respect to our weather here is the fact that with weather systems moving along, uh, and that Pacific jet far a little further south than it otherwise would be, uh, could or could be, uh, we're going to get these fronts every couple of days, and it won't be able to get too warm. I'll put up the uh, <clears throat> temperature anomalies. You can see where the below normal and the above normal, um, how that works going forward. You know, the temperatures in the east, starting from... Let's go back. Here we go. So, so starting from today, you know, kind of average. You can see it is a large area below normal across the lakes. It's much above normal in, in a good chunk of the west, and that remains the case through a good part of the rest of this week and into the weekend. And then you see this larger area of below normal temperatures spreading out through the plains and lakes and, and into the east uh, going into the last week of June. The west gets very hot, particularly the northwest. When we showed you those easterly winds blowing across the Rockies to the northwest, uh, that makes it very, very hot. Temperatures well above normal uh, across uh, much of uh, uh, the eastern half of Washington, Oregon, into northern California, while the east stays pretty much below normal right through the last week of June. And, you know, we're heading into the first week of July. And, you know, the same thing kind of normalizes a little bit toward the end of the period as the trough, <clears throat> as the uh, jet stream pulls up a little bit uh, further to the north. I'll uh, just very quickly see if they updated uh, the advisories. <clears throat> and we, uh, it did, they did not upgrade the system in the Gulf of Mexico, it appears. And they uh, extended tropical storm warnings further west. And tropical storm watch now being issued for the upper Texas coast. And... Tropical storm Brett, with top winds of 45 miles an hour, continues to now, you know, skim just along the uh, uh, coast of uh, South America in the southeastern Caribbean, and it will uh, probably run into hostile conditions uh, aloft and begin to weaken. So uh, enjoy your day. Separate video coming out to, to follow this one, to deal with the tropical systems. Uh, you can check out website posts at meteorologistjochoppy.com. Angry Ben has New York City covered on nycweathernow.com. And uh, you can download my weather app and subscribe to my forecast if you're in the eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, New York City. Specific forecasts for your particular neck of the woods. The app is free. And you, uh, the subscription is just 99 cents a month, and it's on. Uh, it's available for iPhones and Androids, and there'll be a link that'll come up on the top of the video here. You can uh, click on that. And by the way, uh, got a hundred new YouTube subscribers uh, over the last uh, two days, and welcome aboard. Thank you for subscribing. Please participate in the conversation. I see that some of you have, and I'll be very interested in what you have to say. Uh, with respect to um, the weather, if you have any suggestions or ideas, or if you're from a specific part of the country, do mention where you're from so that I can get an idea, and then I, maybe I can pay a little closer attention to what's happening in your neck of the woods. Have a great day.